sexual condition, it just left me with a desire to uh, seek for more and seek for the truth as to uh, why I had to do worship to ma Mary, use rosary for my prayer, and just pray through uh, saints. And I uh, went to the same college with Elias, and as soon as we completed our nursing education, uh, we soon got married. And it was around this time that I, I thought, um, just uh, with so much thought in my mind of what godliness was all about, and uh, why um, I had to, um, to believe uh, in some areas that I wasn't really sure about, uh, I left uh, Catholic Church, and uh, my, uh, my knowledge uh, was uh, initially um, um, informed by a sermon I had, an open-air uh, teaching by um, Seventh-day Adventist Church, who talked uh, so much about the Catholic faith uh, being, um, being of Antichrist. They mentioned uh, scary items like uh, Antichrist, the beast, and condemned everybody who comes to church on Sunday and say that you are actually um, worshiping the mark of the beast. So in my mind then, I thought this must be the true church because I always decided to go uh, to a church that worshiped in um, spirit and truth. So, uh, but my uh, true uh, first response to gospel, uh, as I can tell, was around uh, the year 2005 to 2006. And this was just uh, from the many, many challenges and pain uh, that I experienced uh, within the marriage relationship. And um, I had, uh, we had a serious problem and we were in such a position that um, one day we fought physically, which was the first fight and hopefully the last, and I resorted to firings because I was weak physically so I couldn't really fight back and I was subdued. So I started destroying everything on my way, so uh, just to prove my point, and then later I just left the, the home and uh, I took my two kids with me, I uh, rented uh, another apartment, of course I was working, and um, just, um, it was allowed that time that, you know, being the wife who was also prayerful and reading the Bible at some point, so I knew that at some point I had some, also done something wrong, and I was uh, deeply, deeply convicted of my sin, and that was the sin of pride. Uh, we wouldn't have resorted to fighting if I was just calm and submissive, but my pride actually is the one that just triggered the whole situation. It was so deep that I just feared mis um, losing them um, or, or breaking the marriage relationship. I still, um, I still love Elias, and um, I prayed to God and just grieved my situation and asked ask him to please uh, provide another chance. And I promise that if he provides me another chance, I'm going to be respectful and I'm going to change. Uh, it took a lot of time, a lot of uh, people coming in to, uh, to try to arbitrate us, but it was during this time that my Christian friend offered me a book um, in marriage by a Christian writer. As I read the book, I realized that we hadn't really had a goal, we hadn't really had a goal in uh, Christian counseling, and I learned so much truth, and uh, it was the will of God, it is still the will of God for marriage to happen and how he will it to work well and to bring up God's offspring. But what actually uh, caught my attention was the story of Hosea that was offered at the end of the chapters. And the story of Hosea as was told and reading it from my African background uh, was uh, so strong to me that I was just so incredibly overwhelmed. Uh, this story of this wife who kept running away from her husband and, and her husband who actually uh, kept uh, uh, running after her just to seek to provide the items that she needed. And the worst of it being that after she got the first baby and the second baby who was not Hosea's and the third baby, such things, if I did them myself in my, in my African background, it would be such an, abo a, a, an abominable act that I would be thrown out as an outcast. So uh, for me to see this, um, to hear this story and to understand this um, love of God, and eventually this woman was uh, ended up being like a, a cult prostitute, and uh, she did what she did, and eventually she was being sold as a slave. And then the Spirit of God himself leads Hosea to purchase her and then to bring her back to, her, to his homestead and actually bring her back to, uh, to his love.
that was just really incredible for me. And I said, if this is the love of God, then it is this God that I want. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I thought maybe uh, this will save my money. This God who loves me so much, I, I thought to myself, I really wanted to follow him, but I, I was probably just looking for his goodness and mercy in my life. Anyway, um, we came back together, you know, went through, um, uh, you know, uh, ha hazards and, and, you know, just reconciled. And as years went by, of course, I responded better. You know, I learned to be a little submissive, but um, I kept sinning in many ways. In my heart, I knew that I was, uh, I was probably better than him. And I kept in my attitude thinking I was better than him. And I think this kept me just thinking and looking down on him. Sometimes he didn't really uh, have any idea what I was thinking. But um, being convicted at times, listening to uh, sermons and reading the Bible, sometimes just being um, encouraged. But it uh, seems like um, this marriage especially is the one that has a big impact or a huge impact in, in my um, Christian or spiritual growth. But... Um, you know, as years went by and eventually uh, God provided a way uh, for us to come to the U.S., our life, um, we had a fairly good relationship, but our coming to U.S. was um, one that we invested in and, and just um, really hoped and prayed that we would find a, a, a Bible-believing church. And uh, by God's uh, providence, uh, we ended up uh, coming to CBC, and um, that is where we met um, a, a a God-fearing family by God's grace, and they invited us uh, into their home for a fellowship. And then it's just by observation that I saw how they related to each other, how they uh, uh, they brought up their family and kids, and even by attending the the, the meetings, um, the fellowships, and the um, Tuesday meetings, I realized that women don't go safe; they just go straight to prayers, and then they give testimonies, they um, they, they edify each other in the Word of God. And this, to me, just made me think. Uh, it uh, seems as though I didn't really appreciate um, the sins I was living in. And I then kept thinking and thinking that I have been gossiping so much. It was like uh, I didn't la like it, and yet I kept thinking I was a good person. I looked down on my husband, although he probably didn't realize, but I, I kept thinking that maybe I'm the one to blame because he's such a good man. Like, he's, he's really spontaneous. I should be doing better because I read the Bible more. And then I kept thinking about um, uh, bouts of anger towards my children. That, sorry, usually I, I would provoke them to wrath. And to to me, it wasn't something that I really thought of as sin. And those um, those things just disturbed me. And I kept coming to CBC, and of course, uh, learning new doctrines, especially uh, the doctrine of divine election. And then, of course, wondering whether this is really true, and just struggling with it. But didn't add, add there because as I kept reading the Bible, as I kept listening to someone, you know, uh, just God taught me the truth that I came to accept um, or to understand a lot of truths. And this doctrine, one day as I was just thinking about it and just learning about it, I thought, why should God choose me among many? At one point I was bothered, why should he choose other people and not others? But this was like, why me? Why me? And then I started just seeing him, his incredible love in my life. And then um, I started um, being introduced to, um, to evangelism. And then I just happened to have this desire, a very, very de uh, strong desire to talk to the people at work, which I, I started by God's grace. But then um, I was, whichever method I used, I was really prayerful and trusting God. And the, the members of my group uh, sent me and kept encouraging me and praying pray for me. But this um, seems to me like that was one turning point because it seems that whatever I was telling them also came back in a way like to test me. Uh, God dealt with me in very incredible ways that I can never really forget because this was during the time that I was hurt, depressed by the issues, that, by the response of the people. But then at the same time, uh, God would teach me to don't say in my heart that God is going to affect. You don't have that attitude. Pray for their salvation. And then he brought to my mind that, that you have been forgiven in talents, multitude of sins. You must forgive other people. And then at some point, it was who is going to, um, um, who is going to 
condemn the Ignatius God who justifies. So those truths came to me in, in ways that I knew for sure they were being addressed to me. And uh, I went through hearts and pains as I, I considered how some people just, uh, I would say, like uh, came down on me. Others would believe that um, I'm truly, I'm, 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 I'm like uh, genuine. Uh, and they were my friends, by the way. I, I wasn't just talking to anybody. They were my friends who just turned to be my enemies just because um, I, I was telling them what I'm learning. And some of them, I had known them to be gossipers. And at work, usually, I would probably keep a, a low profile, try to do the right thing even before even before, before uh, this whole um, experience. But then they became my enemies. They talked uh, about me, and it wasn't really a good thing. I even feared to go to work. I even uh, feared to go um, to a group of people. But, but by God's grace, he protected me, and he taught me so much truth that I learned my own weaknesses, my own sins. I was convicted, but I could tell his gentle voice, just encouraging me. Uh, since then, I started learning so much. I saw my sinfulness. I, I, I actually... Um, so my desire to, 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 to be saved. At some point, I, as I was begging God to please show me the specific sin because this um, sinfulness in probably evangelizing, I couldn't point out what was my specific sin. And I kept saying, uh, I kept praying and even asking the members of the group to um, just help me. And then I, I read um, Romans 3.10 and then um, this whole um, description was me at, at some point i knew that this is me this is me who never sees god who 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 is depraved from uh, from my my tongue from my throat from my from my toes everything was sinful and i cried to god and asked him please deal with me please uh, change my heart it was then that i kept listening and the the, the teaching from the attitudes to when jesus says why do you look at the um, uh, speck in your brother's eye and you ignore the log in your own eye? It really meant uh, I was uh, initially like hating it. And then I kept saying, if I really love Jesus Christ, then I must love his teaching. And then I read, I kept reading his word, read Psalm 19, the law of God is perfect. By God's grace, I, I, I started um, just embracing the law of God, just um, just the spirit of god just causing me to love him and if if i was convicted of any sin i wouldn't just uh, justify myself but i would seek to ask god to please help me love you because um you love me first so it has been a walk and i can tell that there's a difference because i have um hated i have now hated sin and my my desire uh is to love god not just wanting to keep my marriage just to be um Pleasing to him, just to be a godly example to my family, to my to whoever um, that um, can just observe me would know that I'm a godly woman, and that's that's my desire, so that uh, the name of uh, God may not be defiled. Because that was a big deal when I was talking to people. I kept thinking maybe my my character is is wanting, and maybe I'm the one causing the name to be defiled, and that really meant a lot. I didn't want that to happen. Today, um, I know there are times that I fear. Sometimes I. I sometimes doubt uh, my salvation, but I'm reminded that it's really not about me. Uh, he reminds me that I am actually cared by the power of God, and my faith, um, my salvation is in His heart, and He is able to save me forever, since uh, His Son always lives to make intercessions uh, for me. I believe that He who began the good work in me will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. No, no. Regina, based on your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your commitment to follow the Lord in the context of Cornerstone Baptist Church, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.